Blessed be everybody, my name is Bill Sheets, Craft Name Man, and you are watching Witch in the Working, where we will be discussing all things witchy, in and out, throughout and about, above, below, and beyond. Today, we have a great episode. Um, we are going to be talking about sacred spaces and altars. And it's a super exciting episode because we're going to actually leave the studio and go visit some awesome sacred spaces. So, with that being said, roll the intro. Welcome back, everybody. So, like I said, today we're going to be talking about sacred spaces and altars. Now, as long as man has worshipped the first gods because they couldn't figure out why the sun died every day, <laughs> there's been sacred spaces. These sacred spaces were for them to go to to worship these entities of mystery. Stonehenge in England, Machu Picchu in Peru, the Great Pyramids in Egypt, the Isle of Skye in Scotland, the Sanctuary of Delphi in Greece. These are all sacred pagan places, just to name a few. So, fast forward tens of thousands of years, and we still, to this day, utilize sacred spaces for the same reasons. From churches, synagogues, and mosques, to temples, groves, and closets, sacred spaces and the symbols that decorate and influence them have embodied religions for thousands of years. So a sacred space is a location for you set aside to reserve a moment in time for you to communicate. This communication can be with your gods or even yourself. You can also choose to communicate with astral beings. For Wiccans, this sacred space is meant to be one between the worlds. A place that is not just a physical space, but a spiritual one as well. Here, you're free to walk and talk with beings of the astral. A direct connect to the hidden corners of the mind that most people will never get to experience. But, we're not exactly most people, are we? So, of course, out in nature, in a distant forest with a stream running through and a clearing in the sky and wild animals running about, this is the supreme perfect sacred space that every Wiccan dreams of. But most of us, we don't have this option. So we're gonna need to find a place a little bit closer to home and maybe not as private. A sacred space can be a room that you have set aside to for just that purpose. This is rare, but when it can be accommodated, please consider yourself very fortunate and lucky. A sacred space can just as well be a small closet or a corner of an apartment or a home that is relatively undisturbed. I've seen balconies set up as magical spaces, porches and patios, and I've seen very large spaces where multiple groups of pagans and Wiccans alike were invited to celebrate a Sabbath um, for a weekend. I've even seen small and large mobile buildings, um, sheds basically, um, that people have brought to their homes and transformed into a sacred space. The one thing I can say about every single one of these sacred spaces is that no matter how big or small, they all carry a very special energy that all of us embrace and, and universally find very special in our hearts. And we as peoples that understand this energy embrace it for all it's worth. These places are shrines within our hearts where we can share, learn, and worship, and capture the secrets of our connected souls that help us all to grow spiritually and magically. When I first embraced the Wiccan path, I was still a child for the most part. Um, my very first sacred space and altar was in the corner of my room on a small nightstand. I remember that when I would find tools or imagery that that fit me and that I embraced, I would excitingly run over and place it on the altar and situate it just right so that I could proudly and secretly honor my newfound way of life. I will never forget those first years of wonder and awe. They will always hold a special place in my heart. It was a time when my mind was opening and my ignorances were being stifled and banished. When you are ready to choose your sacred space, choose wisely. Consider things such as lighting, disturbing noises, odd traffic patterns, 
and even the environment itself. Just because a spot is available doesn't mean it's the right place. But once you have decided, by all means, make it your own. Start off by cleaning the area physically and spiritually. Give it a good vacuuming, give it a good sweeping. And then afterwards, start off spiritually cleansing it by giving it another sweeping, but this time a besoming with a magic room where you're sweeping away negative energies and whatnot. It's very important to cleanse that space. You can also make witch's holy water by mixing salt and water together and sprinkle that in the area. And also a good saging will help. I recommend after you have saged, follow it up with a nice sweet smelling incense because sometimes the sage can be overwhelming. So. Some of you don't know what I mean when I'm saying consecration. So up in the little block above, you can go there and I'll do a quick tutorial on how to consecrate items that you can then put on your altar. Okay, so you have your sacred space set up and it's been cleansed and you feel confident about it. Now is a great time to get an altar and place that altar. The altar can be a small table or something of that sort and it's used to place devotional imagery or magical tools or simply symbols of an energy that you're trying to invoke in that area. The altar is the witch's workbench for everything we do. Spell workings, sabbats, esbits, path workings, or even simple meditations, a place to go just to connect. The altar is at the center of it all. Types of altars, just to name a few, are personal, devotional, seasonal, and elemental. These altars can be placed in the center of a room or in a corner or at the edge of a room towards the wall. The direction most Wiccans place their altars are north or east. Most traditional Wiccans will place their altar facing the north, which is the place of strength and stability. However, some Wiccans today place or face their altars to the east, which is the place of the rising sun and symbolizes new beginnings. I actually know one coven who spins their altar with the seasons. So in the winter time, it faces north, in the summertime, it faces south. In the springtime, it faces east. And in the autumn, it faces west. Which is very interesting, but that's what's awesome about Wicca, is that you can do it, and it's fine. Also, in most Wiccan circles, the right side of the altar is reserved for the god, and the left side of the altar is reserved for the goddess. But, again, it's a matter of preference. And there are no hard, fast rules as an eclectic Wiccan. So unless you happen to join a tradition that tells you how to do things, go for it. So what do you put on your altar? Well, that depends on your current circumstance. Do you plan on using the altar to honor a god and goddess? If so, then place imagery of that god and goddess upon your altar and maybe some items that are correspondences to that god and goddess. This is where a little research comes into play on your part. So look up that god and goddess and see what toots their horn <laughs> that you can put on the altar. You can also place magical tools that you may have obtained on the altar. Make sure you've consecrated these tools. Again, the little box up at the top will take you to a small video that I put together on how to consecrate. But definitely make sure you consecrate anything before you put it on the altar to get rid of any um, unwanted or negative energies that may be attached to that item. So your altar does not need to remain a specific type of altar either. For instance, if you have an altar set up for one thing and you decide you wanna celebrate a seasonal Sabbath, then you can change the altar around to reflect those intentions. For instance, an altar set up for a spring equinox may contain early spring flowers or symbols of balance such as a sun wheel or painted ostara eggs. Opposite, an altar set up for a fall equinox may contain autumn leaves, a horn of plenty, nuts, grapes. There's also types of altars that some Wiccans will set up called elemental altars. They'll usually set these up in the direction of that particular element. That would be being air in the east, fire in the south, water in the west, and earth in the north. This type of altar is used to connect with those specific elementals. And this type of altar will contain correspondences upon it that have to do with that direction. Elements and the elementals that coincide with them is a little bit more advanced form of magic that I promise we'll get into a little bit later. but. We won't go there right now. Be patient, I promise it's worth it. So, I've talked enough about sacred spaces and altars. Now, I would like to, one, show you my sacred space that I work with, um, and 
After that, we're going to take you to visit some sacred spaces and other people's altars. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get out of here. All right, everybody. So we're here at Drusilla's house. She is a witch and we're going to check out her sacred space. So. What's hey, up? Hey, how are you? Come right in. Wow. So here we are inside Drusilla's circle room. Amazing. This is the sacred space where she practices her version of the craft. So Drusilla, tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, been practicing for almost 20 years. We've had an establishing coven here in this coven set since 2008. Um, and we have grown, if, if you will, slowly. Uh, and we just practice esoteric, we practice mysticism, we practice the Gardnerian tradition, uh, we practice both inner and outer court. Um, and it's uh, bringing together everyone like a family. Awesome. All right. So one of the things I noticed over here was you have this little <laughs> setup over here. So what's going on with this? Uh, because of COVID-19, um, we are both working out of the house because we are quarantined, but also we are continuing our coven group meetings and having Zoom meetings online so that we can stay connected, we can work together, and we can continue training, even though we're doing it from a distance. Love it. Genius. So let's keep going. Um, we'll look a little bit more at Drusilla's room and I will take you on some slow-mo shots. All right, so we're at another friend of mine's house. This is Araiga. He is a fellow covenant of mine, and we are here to check out his sacred space, which he has some special, uh, he has some special shit going on. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Come on over. Always the extremist, this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mr. Madden. Okay. Come on in. I like it. In. Oh, man. Hold on. Let's get everything here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get I'm the full effect. Get this little west altar over here. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. This is our little tool shed right here. You usually kind of like, you know, you use some of this stuff for like um, chakra healing. You know, kind of like. Oh, a little bit yeah. of a vibration. We have singing bowls that we use. This we use this to kind of like you know mess up the, the the frequencies a little bit, cause a little bit of vibration. Got some scrying mirrors, books, tarot cards. Nice, <clears throat> nice. All of the directions have their appropriate elemental attribution. Love the little fireplace yeah. here in the south. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> little altar setup. I guess this would be a great example of an elemental altar setup that we talked about. Mm -hmm. A little working bench, have the uh, apothecary, a little bit of mortar and pistol. 
um, Baphomet, some amulets and wards. Some herb shelves there. Oh, and over here, looks like we've got the Eastern altar set up to honor air. Yep. It's very cool, very cool. What this, is that? This is the, uh, the the Galatia setup. This is actually, it's a scrying mirror. It's just an old kind of like traditional method of, of scrying the, the fey as I call it. Huh. But, um, yeah, this, this is a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun with this. We have your, can I use your two scrying candles? You add a little bit of a, Incense to the sensor. Very creates cool. Creates a little bit of an image. It's Very a lot of fun cool. to work with. This is the brass vessel of King Solomon right there. Right. All right. You got all the gin in there, and this is my personal working station. Of course, I'm always working with. Uh, so this is like a little personal altar. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And usually it's kind of bare. It's kind of bare right now because I haven't been doing a lot with everything that's kind of going on. All right. But, so, um, dude, you're like totally like knocking out all of the altars I was explaining earlier to these people. <laughs> okay. This is great. Nice. I nice. mean, so what? So nice. over here, what is this? This is uh, so the this north. Would be, this would be the the earth in the north, and then we have you know we have some sweet grass, rose quartz. Uh, presents that people give me. Oh, Little very cool. Emerald very stone. Cool. This is supposed to be uh, petrified wood from Egypt. All right. A good friend from OTO brother gave to me, actually. Very cool. Yeah. So then we've got like this uh, mirror here. Like yeah. This cra oh, that nice pentagram up there. <clears throat> Love, it. Love it. Wow. Okay. How cool. And that was given to me by Bastin Eon. All right. So let's check this out. Bastin Eon or a couple of other fellow coven mates. So let's check out the altar here. Oh yeah, we're getting a good little shot here of this. This is your ritual altar. That and you and your coven. So you have a coven, correct? Yeah, we're, we're starting up a coven and uh, we're kind of like just getting things going. That's just some of our just traditional attributions of salt and water. Looks like one of the last things you did was a little star ritual. Yes, yes, <laughs> our high priest gave that to us for, uh, for uh, the spring equinox, Astara. Wow, so this is an amazing room, brother. I mean, really nice. So, all right, I am super, super excited. Um, so, totally awesome. So from what I hear, rumor has it, our buddy Araiga here has an outside circle too, like an outside whole practice area, which, are you gonna share what? Will you share that with us? I will, I will. Okay, I will. let's will. do it. Let's go, guys. Now that was awesome. We're back. So the only problem is now I got a whole bunch of stuff I want to do to my room. Those were some new ideas. So, well, that ends this episode of Witch in the Working. Um, please click subscribe down below or don't, it's up to you. Um, but I'm looking forward to the next episode coming up real soon. See you guys later, bye.